Good morning and welcome to our worship at home video for Trinity Sunday. My name is Jo Neary and I'm the team vicar in the Beminster area team. Our worship today reflects the inclusivity and community of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We will see photos from our communities and hear a reflection on lockdown from Marjorie Hookings, a resident of Broad Windsor. David Baldwin will lead us as we explore today's Gospel reading. Philip Coulthard will read the Gospel and Judith Hansen will lead us in our intercessions. Our music comes from St Martin in the Fields and from St Mary's Beminster. And if you would like to take part in future acts of worship, do please let us know. We'd love to have you as part of our video. We've got some lovely pictures to share with you today. Firstly, Mary Wetton from Beminster sent this beautiful picture of her birthday at the end of May with a wonderful selection of cards and flowers. Happy 90th birthday, Mary. We hope you had a really lovely time. Philip Coulthard sent pictures of his dog Trixie uh, enjoying her daily walk up Lewiston Hill and also some lovely views back down towards Broadwindsor from the top of the hill. Thank you for sharing those beautiful views and thank you uh, God for letting us live in such a glorious place. Finally, Marion Gadsby from Beminster sent uh, us a prayer that has sustained her this week. It's a prayer from the Celtic tradition of Christianity and Marion has adapted it for her own circumstances this week. So thank you Marion for your generosity and prayerfulness. We love to hear from you each week, so if you've snapped something exciting, you want to send us a picture of where you worship your worship space at home, send us a beautiful view, pictures of flowers in your garden, uh, comments or your view on lockdown, what you've learned about yourself and God. We'd just love to hear from you and include you in our worship video. And if you're watching us today uh, on Sunday, the 7th of June, uh, do join us for Zoom coffee at 10 o'clock. The link for Zoom is on our Worship at Home page on our website. So let us gather together as one community of faith, as part of the body of Christ, to worship God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We sing our hymn, Thou Whose Almighty Word.
invited Marjorie, part of the Rural Windsor community, to reflect on what she's learned in lockdown, both about herself and uh, personally and spiritually. This is the video she sent us. Hello, I'm Marjorie Hookings and I'm from Broad Windsor. My lockdown hasn't been that different from my normal life, to be honest. I'm a writer, so I spend a lot of time on my own writing in this shed. And I go up to Lewiston Hill with my dogs quite early in the morning when there's nobody else about. So I've been doing that as much as I can. And I've actually enjoyed the solitude. I'm quite happy in my own company and I don't need other people. Although I have missed family and friends and my mother who's 94. I think I'm a little bit worried that when all this is really over, I'll still be a hermit and it's given me a good excuse to be one. So I need to watch that. But I think the thing I've learned during lockdown is that the countryside is so important to everybody and being out in the open air and it really is good for the soul. During lockdown, I've done a music slot every day called The Sound of Music Through the Square Window and I've played requests for villagers from a loudspeaker in my spare bedroom. It's gone down really well. Today is the last day. I'll have done it for about 72 days, I think. And it's really brought people together at a time when we're all apart. And somebody said to me, it's something that we can do. We can listen to it and know that other people are listening to it in the village too. And this village is one of great community spirit with the shop and the school and the pub and the village hall and the church. And so many things have changed for us. And I think what we do need to do is maintain that community spirit that we've managed to hang on to during lockdown with the shop being socially distanced in the queue, but you can still chat to people with the takeaway beer from the pub and the takeaway food as well. All of these things help to make this community close knit. And I think that's why the music has gone down so well. So in terms of talking about what I might have learned from lockdown is that if I have a left field idea, like the sound of music through the square window, I'm just gonna do it. I'm not gonna ask people and be shouted down. It's done wonders for my confidence and it's made me believe in myself. I'm not a religious person, but I feel that I'm quite spiritual and to be able to go out into the countryside, soak up the view, see things from a different perspective has really been so valuable to me and I think to everybody else. And I think we need to hang on to that. I'm not sure how much we can do en masse, but as a community, we can pull together and we can do things together like we always have done. And we can build on this and make the most of it. We weren't expecting it, but it's happened and we must develop and grow. And most of all, be kind. Thank you Marjorie for sharing your thoughts and wisdom with us. As we continue to worship God together, we reflect for a moment on our own experiences of lockdown, on what we have learned about ourselves and about God, and we ponder how we too can show kindness and mercy to one another. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God, our Redeemer. You made us to be one family, yet we have divided humanity. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You were born a Jew to reconcile all people, Yet we have brought disharmony amongst races. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You rejoice in our differences, yet we make them a cause of enmity. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray the collect prayer for this Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We listen to our reading. The reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, beginning at verse 16. The commissioning of the disciples. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. David is going to lead us in a time of reflection on our gospel reading. Now I preach in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It would have been so easy today to have preached on the Gospel passage uh, from Matthew, that great commission uh, of Jesus to go and baptise everyone in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And of course, to remember that he will be with us always, yes, to the end of time. But... I felt over the last few days that I'd needed to somehow try and address uh, how the Trinity speaks into all that we have seen because of the death of a man in America and the uprising and the anger and the frustration. What is it that the Trinity helps us to understand about what God wants and desires for us and for his world? And over the past few months, it's been like a story, hasn't it? A long story that we've been telling. And I'm sure, like you, uh, I've had many a time I've been telling a long story when somebody said, well, so what? Well, we've listened over the past months to the stories of Advent and Christmas and Epiphany, of Lent and Holy Week and Easter and Pentecost. And now we are entitled to ask, so what? What does it all mean? And in particular, what kind of God is this? Well, at Advent and Christmas, we celebrate a God who comes as far as the Father of Jesus Christ, with new creative love into the life and history of the world. Then in Lent and at the Passion and Easter, we celebrate the life of of Jesus Christ, who is the way to God, the truth of God, and the life of God, shared with us, humankind, even to the point of suffering and death, so that even all that goes wrong may be forgiven and taken up into the eternal purposes of God. At Pentecost, we celebrate the continuing presence of this God, who is the Father of Jesus Christ, alive in every place and circumstance where love and creativity flourish, and where forgiveness is sought and expressed. Now, in true Cudston Theological College tradition, of course, there has to be three points. And in this case, it's three signs, I believe. 
Firstly, all these stories belong together. And there is a fundamental unity in God. And Jesus constantly refers to Father as Abba, Dad, Daddy. Jesus had an intimate adult relationship with the source of all things. And the kingdom of God is present in his person and life. That is the implication of all the parables Jesus told, and of all the stories we have about Jesus in the Gospels. The unity between Jesus and God is reflected also in the unity between all the stories of the Christian year. We believe in one God, we say, as inheritors of the tradition of Judaism, that saw all things as depending upon the goodness of one God who creates light out of darkness and redeems the suffering from evil. The second sign is that the story is about, about God who moves out to be inclusive. And there are two aspects to this. The first is that the unconditional goodness of God includes everybody. Black, white, male, female, whatever situation of life you find yourself to be in. And this allows the putting right of what goes wrong in life. And the people who are cast out of society for ritual reasons of taboo, for moral reasons, all of them, says Jesus, are included. No one, no one is left out of God's love. But there is another sense in which the idea of inclusion is important. And that, and it is that the early Christians soon came to the sense that they were included in the life of God. After the resurrection of Jesus, it was as if God included them in God's own life. It was as if the very Spirit of God had been given to humankind. So, not only were all human beings included uh, with each other in God's own purposes for human society, all humanity was included in the life of God. And the writer of the second letter of Peter speaks of our being sharers in the divine nature. And the early theologians of the church taught that humankind is the animal that has received the vocation to become God. And God became human so that humanity might become divine. The third and final sign so Trinity Sunday, as well as being a feast of title and an occasion for giving thanks for the past, is about how human beings are included in the life of God. But how are human beings included in the life of God? Well, the answer is by our behaviour. To put it simply, if we are taken up into God's life, then we are called to behave like God. And when we act in unity with God and are loving and creative, then we show our inclusion in the life of God. And when we refuse to be controlled by the unthinking barriers and taboos of our society and culture, then we are demonstrating our inclusion in the life of God. There are two things that we can do to go on celebrating the Holy Trinity. And one of them isn't making a show of holding a Bible in front of a church, but to continue living a life of inclusion, allowing everyone in God's world to be part of what we are, what we believe and what we do. And like God, that's what we should do. 
On the other, well, it's simply to recognise the life of God in other people when we see it, and to give thanks. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayers today are led by Judith Hansen. Let us pray. Lord God of the Blessed Trinity, on this special day we come before you to offer our praise and adoration. You are God, the creator, giver of all things. You are Christ, the saviour of the world. You are the spirit of truth and love, willing to dwell within us. We come to you in prayer and ask you to hear us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church all around the world. Especially at this time, we remember Bishop Matthew Peter and the country of South Sudan with whom we are linked. As the pandemic worsens in countries like India and Africa and in refugee camps with substandard health provision, we call upon your healing powers for those poor and suffering and for strength and fortitude for health workers as they toil in very difficult circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you all Christians who are being persecuted for their faith and yet remain faithful to you. Lord, by your spirit, give them perseverance courage and endurance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you all members of the clergy across our team and diocese and give thanks that through this difficult time, they and others have been able to continue to serve you, passing on the good news and providing encouragement and worship and learning opportunities through the use of technology. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you give wisdom to those in leadership and authority over us. We pray that they will serve with honesty and integrity, putting people before politics, remembering that all people are equal, valued and of worth. Lord, let your will for our world be accomplished through the decisions they make and give them a vision of a better way of life for everyone. At this time of pandemic, racial tensions, social unrest and fears for the future, we pray for those who are saddened by the loss of loved ones, those who are angry at inequalities and injustice, those who are anxious about financial problems, those facing loss of job or business, those who are worrying about schooling and health. Let them find the light in their darkness, Lord. Let them find Jesus, the light of the world, a light which no darkness can put out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that we may be able to find ways of following your commission, even in lockdown, to tell of the good news of your saving grace and love for all through witness, kindness and generosity of spirit, creating us a love for peace, not peace that is absent from struggle, nor peace that is blind to injustice, but the peace that makes whole what now is broken. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We gather our thoughts and prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the Father, from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Stay safe and see you soon. Bye bye.